Okay, so here's the setup for your placemat and your plate and your papers. You can see I've got my plate on a paper towel. I've got my printmaking plan up here, and I've even got my sketch taped to the side of my table so it's out of the way. My six papers are on my stool, and that's where they're going to stay so that they don't get dirty. Over here, I've got my brayer, a tray, a small brayer that'll be clean, that'll stay clean, and then my ink color. Your ink comes in either a tube or a jar. My partner, who is going to be using the same color as me, in this case it's black, has his stuff set up over here. So he's got his plate, he's got a paper towel underneath, he's got a wet paper towel right here, his printmaking plan, and his sketch taped to the side of the table. Important that you have a wet paper towel and a dry paper towel. Don't forget those. So if you have a jar, you're going to take a uh, spatula, basically a popsicle stick, and you're going to just smear yourself a line on the top of your tray like this. Okay? You don't want a lot on there. You don't want too little. So this is like the Goldilocks scenario. You need just the right amount. So when you start to roll your ink, you want to roll in one direction. Okay? So I'm not going back and forth. I'm going in one direction this way, and then I'm going to pivot and go this way. What you're looking for is you want your ink to kind of resemble the skin of an orange, and you want to hear that, like, tacky sound. So if you are, like, gliding across here, then you have too much ink. If it's looking really dry and sort of pixelated like this over here, then you don't have enough. So that's kind of your clues on how to figure out if you have enough, okay? So I have this kind of orange skin sort of texture. And I know that I've, I'm listening to that tacky sound. I know I've got a, my roller, my brayer perfectly uh, inked. I'm going to move on over to ink my plate. Notice that my ink is just kind of condensed into one area. I haven't spread it all over my tray. So you want to kind of keep it in one section. All right, moving over to the plate. So I'm going to put one finger here to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to roll on top. So notice... Everything that I wanted to stay white is not getting ink in it. So also when I'm rolling, rolling in different directions and making sure that it's covered evenly. So yeah, your fingers are gonna get dirty. That's just kind of how it goes. Okay, so I'm pretty good. My brayer is gonna go back onto my tray and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull my print. This is where your wet paper towel comes in. Wipe your fingers off on your wet paper towel. Okay, and then slide your plate up. Pull one of your papers off of your chair. Okay, and obviously this one's going portrait, so I can turn it this way or I can pull it this way. Either way, it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Try and get it in the middle and try and keep your paper clean. I'm not really doing a very good job of that right now. So take that and slide over, okay? Now your little brayer that you picked up from before, okay, is gonna be used to really make sure that you've pressed all the way down. A little squeaky brayer, okay? And then you can pull your print, okay? This immediately goes to the drying rack and you're gonna repeat this process until you have all six of your papers printed. Make sure that the drying rack shelves are full before you lower the shelf and start adding more prints. This will help us save room on the drying rack and make sure everyone has a spot for their print when they're finished printing. Everything you need for printmaking is over here on the shelf by the sink. You can see you have your selection of inks, your different sized brayers, your ink trays, and your wood styluses for scratching your foam plate. Also on this side, you have your tub for washing the brayers, and you have a place to put your clean and dry brayers when you're finished washing them. So to start class out, the, wa the brayer washer is gonna want to place that yellow tub in the sink and fill it with water. Don't need to fill it all the way, just maybe a couple of inches. 
once you have a couple of inches of water in the brayer washing tub, what you're going to want to do is make sure that the faucet gets twisted a little bit out of the way so that when you turn the sink on, the water is going to go down the drain and not into the brayer tub. This will allow students to wash their plates first instead of having too many people at the sink and trying to wash brayers and plates at once. When it's time to clean up, all of their dirty brayers are going to go into that yellow tub. And they're just gonna sit there and soak. Once everyone is done washing their plates, then the brayer washer can wash all of the brayers and the tray washer can wash all of the trays. So we wanna let everybody wash their plate first before we start washing all of our other dishes. When you're done printing all six of your sheets, what you're gonna do is need to wash and dry your plate. So to wash and dry your plate, you're just gonna simply put your plate in the sink and take a scrubber brush with a little bit of water and you're just gonna scrub this out. You can see that it comes off pretty easily. If I push too hard, I'm gonna scratch my plate. So you just gotta be careful and make sure that you are um, just gently rubbing. You can see that even just without rubbing it, it kind of comes off. But to get into some of those little crevices, you may wanna just kind of brush over it with your brush. Once it's washed, go ahead and dry it. So you'll notice that like some of the black didn't come off of my plate all the way. That's totally normal. Uh, when you dry it, that's what's important. Make sure when you dry it, your paper towel comes out mostly clean. And then this gets stored with all of your papers and your printmaking plan. At the other sink in the front of the room, closer to the sewing machine, what you're going to do is stack all of the dirty trays. Notice that they're stacked crosswise so that they're not sitting inside of one another and getting the bottoms and everything all dirty. That just makes a bigger mess. So you want to cross stack your extra trays and then after everyone's done washing their plates, the tray washer is going to pick up the tray, put it inside the sink, turn the water on, and use the scrub brush to scrub everything off of the tray. Once the tray is clean, let it kind of drip dry and place it in the drying rack. When you're done, as you get more trays on there, what you're gonna wanna do is cross stack those as well, just as you can see here. What you don't want is for the trays to sit inside one of another and then not dry for the next class. When I'm done washing and drying my plate and it's time to clean up and get ready to go, I'm going to make sure that my plates and any leftover dry papers are together and wrapped in my printmaking plan. So you can kind of see it looks just like this. It's almost like a little book. And I've even gone ahead and put my name on the other side so that I know that this is my stuff and it's easily identifiable. 